Good morning, folks. You're watching a gorgeous plasma filament dance over the northwestern limb. We've got news from beneath our feet out into space today, so let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day on our star still prominently featuring the coronal holes more than anything else. We've been monitoring the solar wind from those coronal holes, but right now we're in between streams. Telemetry shows solar wind intensity dropping out overnight. It's purple plasma speed. And it happened as the phi angle up in blue gained measurable stability compared to the previous days. Geomagnetic conditions are quiet as the stream slows to calm and quiet range. Looking at the last day of earthquakes, we had them spread around the western ring of fire and into the Middle East, but the biggest of the day was a blood echo at the low velocity zone in Argentina, sitting all by his lonesome there on the continent in terms of seismicity. Some quick pollution-based overlay maps here from Null School. While this is partly an FYI, Partly a pretty sight I thought would look good in the news. It is also something that conflicts with the reports I'm hearing in the news. Satellite sensors indicate pollution over China has not stopped in the wake of the virus. Run this part back if you need to. It's the most actively polluted air on Earth still. So folks, I've been waiting for confirmation on this. Right side of the chart is a pinkish purple vertical line, and as I shorten the time scale, that event becomes easier and easier to see. It turns out that this anomalous cosmic ray reading might not be so anomalous, or at least not so obviously bad data as it appears. At Thule, a couple Russian stations, and in Athens, they all registered the cosmic ray anomalies in October of last year. There has never been a neutron monitor event like that without major Earth-directed solar flares. Just a reminder that we are at modern cosmic ray maximum here on Earth after it was confidently declared in late 2018 when we matched the record cosmic ray levels of the last sunspot minimum. At this point, we are now talking over our next link, Landsat and Sentinel mapping of the planet here. While coverage could be more complete, they do get multiple looks at the stripes and orbit fast enough to get them at a good clip. Just a fun visualization of their polar orbits and coverage areas here. Up next, we've got quasi-periodic pulsations in solar flares. They are noticing about a one-minute cadence to the emission flashes, and from the same emitting region as the previously identified two- to three-minute heartbeat of quiet sunspots. It's almost like the heart starts racing when it gets ready to put on a show. Mars Rover up next. They're claiming to have a 1.8 billion pixel panorama of the current study region. With such good resolution, you can zoom to a great distance. This clip is just a portion of the full video they've released where numerous items are identified and indeed, their zoom capability on many of those objects is impressive. Let's come next to some punches and counter punches. European Union set to make the first law that would actually force these inane policies on member states. I wonder if their net zero emissions mandate includes the wind coming out of both their ends. So let's go to a guy with an excellent nose. Two shares from Tony Heller today coldest North Pole temperatures in six years, and the better share here on zombie thermometers. Yes, folks, they estimate temperatures for as many or more stations as they get data. They are literally making up temperature data as they go, and here's the thing. They don't even deny it. They just deny it has any negative effect on their climate conclusions or projections. Seriously. For those who don't know, Tony Heller and I fight the same battle, but from different angles, and one might agree that both his direct exposure and our scientific revelation side are required to overcome the beast in our crosshairs. So as the national labs come up with a brand new model to help predict extreme events and inform what changes humans need to make, hey Tony, how about you let me handle this one? They're referring to a paper published late last year in which a party of prominent professors with pretty accolades decided that the record low volcanic cooling we had in 2010 was a good constant to put in the model. And yes, just below that you are reading correctly. They have averaged the solar forcing over a 22-year period. Two things. They are using the old irradiance light values and not the particles cowards. But also, by averaging, they eliminate the sunspot cycle, the up and down, the modulation of El Nino, polar vortex, jet stream blocking, North Atlantic oscillation, cloud cover, and atmospheric electricity, continuing to be ignored as best they can, for now. In 2022, the next IPCC report is allowed to contain solar particles. So far, no scientist using the new particle data set have shown any human influence on climate, and there are over a hundred that show it's the sun and cosmic rays. 
what has been discovered so far still has a couple of years until it circulates fully into official climate models, but we share these papers here every week, and in a few weeks, you'll get the full story of what's real, of what's coming, two years early, the most in-depth book ever written on the topic. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.